Hi, Jenny here. Uh, one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube is honestly bookshop tours. I watch a lot of them and I enjoy hearing about people talking about the books they read and how they have decided to display their books and I just love it. So I thought finally it's about time that I film mine even though nobody asked. So <laughs> this video is about the shelf here and then a few shelves on the other side of the room. Um, I have some more books in a cupboard. They don't really fit in any category that I have my shelves in. Or if I'm planning on to get rid of them, I first move them into the cupboard and if I like seek out to them, like I want to keep this after all, I can go get them. But they're kind of like out of sight, out of mind in the cupboard. So here is my bookshelf tour. I really hope you enjoy it. Um, subscribe if you want to see more from me. But let's get into the video. This shelf is all about women biographies and so forth and then few few poem books as well. So here is Sorbo and his love poems and Safo stung with love poems and fragments. I have mentioned a few times now but I compared the poetry of Sorbonne and Safo for my bachelor's thesis. So it's nice to have this kind of display of them. Then here is my poetry actually. My partner gave me a Christmas present of a book with all of my poems well not all of them and the cover is a picture made by my friend mel of me isn't it a beautiful gift yeah then let's move on to the rest of the books so here is let her fly by zirin yusafzai i am malala by malala yusafzai with christina lamb and malala yusafzai we are displaced this is a story of different girls on and how they became refugees around the world. I think Mala is such an inspiring person. So learning about her and her work through Malala Fund and learning about refugees and their stories is very interesting to me. Um, I mentioned in my music documentaries video that I had read Tina Turner's biography so here it is my love story then here we have my favorite book of last year when god was a woman by marlene stone this is about worshiping female deities and goddesses before abrahamic religions maya angelo i know why the cage bird sings the first part of her series of autobiographies incredibly touching incredibly heavy book uh, then Dear Girls by Ali Wong. This is so funny, so entertaining. Here are two small books. So Chimamanda Nkoshi Adichie, We Should All Be Feminists. Um, her speech in book format. And Astrid Lindgren, Princess Samsung Interville Lake. Then here is Lauren Graham talking as fast as I can. I love Kilmore Girls. Isabel Allende, Paula. Uh, Deborah Feldman's Unorthodox and Exodus memoirs. Uh, Diana Guerrero's In the Country We Love, which is a which is her memoir of living with undocumented family members and how they get deported to Colombia and how it affects Diane. And it's a really gr good insight to American politics and so on. Uh, Renia's Diary by Renia Spiegel. Renia Spiegel was a teenage Jewish girl who unfortunately died in the Holocaust and she was an incredible poet and her poems in the diary are so beautiful and so witty full of that 15 year old teenage energy. Know My Name by Janelle Miller, incredibly heavy but important memoir. We Are Not Here to Be Bystanders by Linda Sarsour, Free Sintoya by Sintoya Brown Long with Bethany Mauger and Becoming by Michelle Obama. Okay, and this is my classics shelf. There are classics in English and in Finnish here. So let's start from the books in the back. So here is Les Miserables by Victor Hugo in Finnish. I actually read like half of this when I was 16 and then I just dropped it. But I am quite proud of my 16 year old self for making halfway through this. Um, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. One of my three Little Women copies. This was actually at the university 
there's this shelf of like you are allowed to take books from it so this stunning penguin english library book was there just for me to take can you believe middle march by george Eliot. orlando a biography i wrote an essay on this for literature class and a room of one's own then these are classics in finnish so here's a another copy of little women but in finnish um i got this from a flea market and the funny thing is that it came with the vhs of this adaptation of little women anna karerina by leo tolstoy um i wanted to go for this year to read this book but i still haven't begun it let's see what happens <laughs> the professor by charlotte bronte uh, alice in wonderland by lewis carroll f scott fitzgerald the great gatsby i think it's so interesting that the direct translation of the Finnish name would be A Golden Hat. And then a Finnish classic by Minna Kant, Kaupalapo and Agnes. I can't really translate those names, but yeah, it's a Finnish classic. Then random classics, so The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. James Joyce, Dubliners. F. Scott Fitzgerald, The collect Collected Short Stories. Edith Wharton, The Age of Innocence, Sylvia Platt, The Bell Jar, and my third copy of Little Women and Good, Good Wives. Um, this cover is absolutely terrifying, so I'm glad I found the third copy for free. Then here's Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is a stunning edition. Some penguin classics you can just read through them. Then a few William Shakespeare books, so two editions of Romeo and Juliet. One of them is my partner's, but we figured that we would like to have all the William Shakespeare books in one place. Then Shakespeare A Midsummer Night's Dream and Anthony and Cleopatra. Then here are some children's classics. So my Paddington's Adventures by Michael Bond. Me and my friend Petra actually translated a portion of this into Finnish for fun for one of our classes. It was so much fun. The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint Exupéry. Sorry about the name. Then Peter Pan by J. M. Bar Barry. Then one of my favorite books, Paolo Coelho, The Alchemist in Finnish. I found this from a charity shop and I do want to read it in English as well. It's coming up in the RM Book Club like later this year, so I might opt for the English version for that time, since I, I I haven't read it in English. Then the last few of the classics, Frances Hodgson Burnett, A Little Princess, George Eliot, The Mill on the Floss, Mark Twain, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, The Scarlet Letter by Hawthorne, Gloria Naylor, The Women of Brewster Place. Ooh, this was heavy. Ooh, this was heavy. <laughs> That's the classic shelf. Okay, so these next two shelves are contemporary fiction. I used to have basically one shelf for YA, YA and just my favorite fiction. And then the second fiction shelf I would kind of hide and not show because it was kind of like these don't fit anywhere. Books from my teenage years and so on. But now I've kind of grown, grown up and displayed them as well. But let's start with this shelf. So here is Chandy Nelson, I'll Give You the Sun. I really thought it was intriguing. I read it like in a day. And I especially like the inclusion of art in it. Then Elizabeth Acevedo's The Poet Acts. Um, I thought this was incredibly impressive and I loved the poetry format of it. A Place for Us by Fatima Farhin Mirza. I have not read this yet. Then one of my first books that I ever read in English, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Um, I read this when I was 16. And to be honest, I have to admit that I, there were some parts that I just, I didn't understand at the time, but I get it now. But yeah, it's a important book since it was the one of the few first English books that I ever read. Elizabeth Acevedo with The Fire on High, I think... Elizabeth Acevedo is such an incredible author. Her books are incredibly well written and so 
entertaining to read. Kim Ji Yeon, born in 1982 by Cho Nam Jo. Becky Albertalli, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Um, American Dervish in Finnish by Ayad Akhtar. Then this was one of my teenage self's favorite books, um, The Hidden Diary of Marie Antoinette by Carly Erickson in Finnish. Um, it's historical fiction and I kind of liked how they played with the reality of who Marie Antoinette is and then the author giving her interpretation of Marie Antoinette. But I don't know if I would like this as an adult and at this point I'm too afraid to reread it. <laughs> Marcus Susak, uh, The Book Thief. It took me so long to read this. I don't know. I was, I guess I was kind of afraid to read this. I was expecting something too heavy for me. But it was very well written. And yeah, I read it in Finnish. I Am the Messenger by Marcus Susak. I think this deserves a reread at some point. I also loved this book as a teenager and I thought it was really intriguing. Then we have Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe and Aristotle and Dante dive into the waters of the world by Benjamin Elder Sines. Just quickly mention, I wrote my master's thesis about this one. Overall, I just, I really love these books. I think they are really entertaining. I will be making a dedicated video about this one soon. A Thousand Splendid Sons and The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. Um, I read both of these last year. I've kind of, I haven't read them before because I was again too scared about how heavy they are. My God, they were heavy, but they were also so beautifully written. So, yes. The Book of Gaza, a city in short fiction. So, read it by Atsef Abu Saif. So, these are short stories that are all located in Gaza. Gaza. Very well written. Translated Kingdom by Yagi Yasi. Another book I read earlier this year. And The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I have not read this one yet. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Incredibly well written, incredibly intriguing. I expected it to be about the sisters only, but that it was kind of like multi generational, incredibly well written. Then Susan Abulava Against the Loveless World. And then my second fiction shelf, uh, my youth favorites, Jenny Gorgon and some of the unknown favorites. So here's a Narnia guide to the fantasy world of Narnia. Then the Chronicles of Narnia, both in English and in Finnish. Um, I got into Narnia around 11, 12. My my sister had her copy of Narnia, of, of the full co Chronicles of Narnia, and I read that one and I liked it so much that I got into it. While others were into Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, I was into Narnia. Then The Magician's Nephew, just a random standalone version. I don't think I will collect the Chronicles of Narnia as their own books, but I have this one. Then on to the Hunger Games. So here's this, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in English and then in Finnish. Can we just compare how like how beautiful and aesthetic this one is? Like how stunning. And then the Finnish one. Yeah, I mean it's not about the cover, it's not about the looks, but like like, let's be honest. I read this in one day. I was so excited to have a new Hunger Games book when it was released in 2020. And I am excited for the adaptation that comes in, in the next year, year after that, I don't know. Then we have, and I know it must bother you, in here's Mockingjay, the final part of the Hunger Games. Then Catching Fire and the first book, The Hunger Games. But you you understand why this is in this order, right? And then in English, The, the Hunger Games, first book, Catching Fire. 
and Mocky J. It bothers me, it really bothers me that Catching Fire is blue, but Mocky J is orange. It should be the other way around. I kind of want different editions for the English versions of the Hunger Games, but I don't think I will get them. But yeah, Hunger Games was a big part of my teenage years, so they deserve to be <laughs> displayed like this. Then, on to my Jenny Colgan books. So as I mentioned, The Perks of Being a Wallflower was one of my first books that I read in English. So it was Jenny Colgan's Little Beach Street Bakery. Basically, my friends at the time gave me this for Christmas. I was just so like attracted to the title and like it sounded so sweet and soothing and calming so yeah that's the first part then summer at the little beach street bakery the following part of it christmas at little beach street bakery and then the most recent part to this kind of series jenny Colgan sunrise by the sea and it has the main characters of these books, but it introduces a new character whose story it's mostly focused on. I recently read this and it just gave me the comfort that Jenny Golden books give me. And so it was lovely. Then a different series, A Very Distant Shore and An Island Christmas. These is the same series, but I'm not sure like if they are subsequent parts of it. If they, I know that there are more parts to this, but I just haven't come across them. And I don't know if I'll get to them. Then here's Little Beach Street Bakery in Finnish, which uh, these were released in the UK quite a while back in English. And it's only recently that Jenny Colgan books have been translated into Finnish. Like, past couple of years which has been really interesting to witness like these books that I read as a teenager early adulthood in English but now are being translated into Finnish then one of my teenage faves as well A Place to Call Home by Carol Matthews I think I was about 18, 18 19 when I read this one and it's you know about Ayesha and her daughter Sabina trying to find a new place to live after escaping an abusive household. Um, I'm not sure if I would still like this now. Maybe it deserves a reread, but I remember really loving this when I read it some years ago. Then The Eternal City by Domenica de Rosa. I read this last year as a kind of like, I need something fun light and comforting to read and it's located the setting of the book is in rome so i had a bad travel <laughs> fever while reading it but it was so fun to read it was people we meet on vacation by emily henry um i read this this year fun cool then here's a nicolas Barreau. Mm, small movie theater in Paris. I don't know if that's the official English title, but I read this some years ago and I remember really liking it, so it stayed on the shelf. Then here is Anna and the French Kiss and Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins. Um, I read this one when I was about 20 and it's kind of like I don't want to say a guilty pleasure because I don't want to describe books that are mostly aimed for young women, young girls as a guilty pleasure. It's not my favorite, favorite book, but if I need something fun to read, I will go for it. Last year, I borrowed Lola and the Boy Next Door from my local library. I did not like that one at all. In fact, I named it one of my least favorite books of 2021. It just was not for me. And then since... I was invested in finishing the whole trilogy. I couldn't find Isla and the Happily Ever After from our local library. So I was like, okay, I'll purchase this one. I'm that invested in what happens for Anna. And Anna and the French Kiss, the first part is my favorite, but this wasn't too bad. Now 
we have my non-fiction shelf and one poetry book and I actually read quite a lot of non-fiction so let's go get into it so the first one that I just have to show is we are everywhere protest power and pride in the history of queer liberation this is like a picture book about like the LGBT history in the US I think there's a lot to learn from here and it's just so incredible to see yes then here's like a history magazine about big powerful women from history then Baladi by Judy Kala so this is a cookbook about Palestinian cuisine. Now, all of our other book uh, cookbooks are in the kitchen, but we actually use this one the most probably. And I just thought it deserves like a spot on the shelf because it's such a stunning book. And the recipes are amazing. The Dessert Game by Renault Bornomo. Um, I watch Masterchef, Masterchef Australia. Renault should have won, period. Then Palestine of 4000 History by Noor Mashallah. I've read this twice now and I kind of want to read it for a third time because there's always something new to learn. And I just, I love the way it's written and it's, it's amazing. Paolo Coelho, this translates to the spy, but I'm not sure if it's the English title. Okay, well, it was originally in Portuguese called A Espia. This is an interesting story of Atahari. Yes. Anthony and Cleopatra by Adrian Goldsworthy. Not gonna lie, I love this because it's a stunning cover, isn't it? But I'll read it one day, I will. Hidden Figures by Margaret Lee Shetley. Then a Winnie the Pooh quotes. Then here is Eddie the Wind's um, collection Memories of Being in the Auschwitz. This was written in Auschwitz. Mm. Short History of English Literature by Emily Legui. Then this big one, a book about the Romanovs by Simon Zevagman de Fiore. My partner got me this as a Christmas present when we watched a documentary series about the Romanovs and not gonna lie, I don't think I'll ever get to this. It's a stunning book and I'm sure it's very interesting. Maybe I should make it a challenge to read this huge book. But yeah, it's maybe one day. <laughs> Two Queens by Alison Plowden. So this book is about Queen Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots. Obviously, as an English major, I was also interested in that that era of history. Bethany Hughes, Istanbul. Sheva Noah, Born a Crime. Billy Holiday Biography by John Sweat. Little Book of Audrey Hepburn by Caroline Jones. Then this is a book by a Finnish author in Finnish about different women philosophers in history and it was really interesting to learn about women philosophers we don't really hear about them that much and I also like I thought it was interesting that while they were fi women philosophers and while some of their thinking was progressive not all of them were like women's rights activists or feminists so yeah that was interesting to learn then a book about Queen Victoria. Then a scented place, the secret history of Anto Mary Antoinette's perfume by Elizabeth de Fadeau. Um, very interesting and very like a uh, biography you wouldn't expect to learn about. Um, women artists, just art by women. Then this kind of coloring book. Uh, 500 years of of Indigenous Resistance by Gord Hill, incredibly educating. And a book about Middle Ages in Finland, Rifka, uh, Mohamed Elgurt's uh, poetry book. It's incredible. I really 
recommend reading this one. He has such an incredible way with words. Angela E. Davis, Freedom is a Constant Struggle, Ferguson, Palestine and the Foundations of a Movement. This is a collection of email interviews with Angela E. Davis and then some of her speeches around the world. Now, whilst there is repetition between different speeches, since, you know, they are speeches, I think this is incredibly educating and a very good, like, start into what freedom really is and what we should fight for. Then a book about North Korea by Barbara Demick. Team Judah in wartime, a book about Ukraine and the past years in Ukraine. Lion by Saru Brearley. Then Narnia quotes. Uh, working class history, everyday acts of resistance and rebellion. So basically for every day they have a story about working class rebellion. And then Anne Frank's diary, uh, Emily Chang Brotopia, be about being a woman in Silicon Valley. And then this is a book about my mother's hometown and then this random tomorrow magazine. Alright, and now moving on to these two shelves on a diff in a different place. Um, you were probably wondering where my Jane Austen books were since they were not on the classics shelf. Well, this is my dedicated Jane Austen shelf. So let's go. Here's Jane Austen Emma in Finnish. And I'm kind of annoyed that it's the movie cover. But, you know, what can you do? Then Mansfield Park. Saniton, my latest addition to this collection, another version of Mansfield Park, Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice in English. Oh, I love this cover so much and I bought this from Rome many years ago. Sense and Sensibility, Emma, Northanger Abbey, Persuasion. Oh, I also love this cover very much. So stunning. The Beautiful Cassandra, uh, Pride and Prejudice in Finnish, or oh, isn't this just beautiful? Um, these are letters of Jane Austen to her family and friends in Finnish, um, Jane Austen Persuasion in Finnish, and then a biography of Jane Austen in Finnish. There he is my Emma Blu-ray, and then like a collection of BBC adaptations of Jane Austen books. Now here on the lower shelf is few of my and my partner's common books that some of them are mine, some of them are his, but it's all a happy family. So here are a few art books, a year in art, so a painting a day. I gave this as a birthday present to my partner one few years ago. Van Gogh, The Complete Paintings, Frida Kahlo and Claude Monet Taschen books. Then here is our mythology section. So Circe or how it should be pronounced, Kirke by Madeline Miller. The Song of Achilles in Finnish and in English by Madeline Miller. And then Galatea by Madeline Miller. I haven't read this, so maybe one day. Then here Ariadne by Jennifer St Saint. Stephen Fry Mythos, my current read. The Silence of the Girls by Pat Parker and also The Women of Troy by Pat Parker. I usually do not buy the first and second parts right away, but this time I decided to go for it. Irish Myths and Legends by Michael Scott. This was bought from a charity shop. Very intriguing. Neil Gaiman, Norse Mythology. And one of my favorite books is... The Goddess of Buttercups and Daisies by Martin Miller. Um, I think I'm gonna reread this for the third time this 
summer but yeah I, I think it's super fun Right, thank you so much for watching. Um, there was a time when I dreamed of having just my own dedicated library room in my future home or whatever, but I am really happy with this shelf. It's actually a funny story because somebody was about to throw this away when we moved to this apartment. So we rescued it, we washed it, and now it's a completely adequate bookshelf, isn't it? So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you like any of these books that I have. Follow me on social media. I'm James Cosmos on Twitter, Instagram and Storygraph. And I have a poetry account on Instagram at poetryofjk. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.